So, hello, um, I'm Sangeeta Alagapan, um, and I'm going to be talking about Im imagineering and designing better. Um, so this begs the question, um, what is design, honestly? Um, if you'd asked me five years ago, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I thought design was about making things pretty, making things look better. And um, the odd thing is, I think we've all been doing design. I think, um, personally, I think I've been doing design in some sort of way, but I never knew what it was called. So I wanted to start this talk a, a little bit about me and how design has shaped my life before coming to college. Um, so this is a couple of things about me. Um, I grew up in the beautiful island country of Bahrain. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, quite know where that is. It's a little island that is wedged in um, the Middle East between Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Um, and what's beautiful about, about Bahrain is that it's both a traditional and a modern society. So we have a lot of these, um, they're called wind towers, and they look very aesthetically pleasing. But what's incredible about them is that they are a very functional piece of design that um, on normal days, summer days, it's like 50 degrees Celsius, which is about like um, 110 or more Fahrenheit. And um, we didn't have air conditioning back in the day, back in the 18th century. So they had wind towers, which um, would take in, it was a high rise tower that would take in cold air from the top and funnel it through the building. And it's such an effic efficient system that it's still around nowadays. And that's an extraordinary thing to have that piece of design, something so, uh, devoid of technology, but is still relevant today. And then on the flip side, we do have very modern sort of designs, which is, uh, this is the Bahrain World Trade Center. And it's an extraordinary building that's won a lot of awards. Uh, besides being very uh, majestic and beautiful, it also has um, wind turbines that um, harvest energy from the wind blowing through the towers, which is an extraordinary thing, seeing um, something so modern and financial and corporate sustaining itself, essentially. Um, so moving on and talking a bit more about uh, the stuff I do here. Um, I do electrical engineering and computer science. Um, I think my very first um, foray into design and technology was HTML5. I started building websites. And um, I think that opened a whole different world about um, being able to make things with technology and uh, make user-facing things, um, and yeah, I think that's what prompted me to come in as a computer science intended EECS major. Um, then according to Pentagram, if you were to ask me what sort of font I would be, I would be Baskerville Old Face, so if you have ever read books in that sort of font, we might be very fine friends. <laughs> Um, I think my favorite prototyping tool would be the ultrafine Sharpie pen, uh, which is an incredible piece of writing equipment and um, it's wonderful for illustrations, uh, wireframes and uh, lo-fi mockups. Um, I love photography and among other things I've done graphic design and photography and um, I guess that's a sort of design and being able to uh, compose what you see and um, yeah, that has shaped a bit more about the stuff I've done on campus as well. And lastly, I love hot air balloons. Um, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything, but um, it is. And that's a picture I took of a hot air balloon in a hot air balloon. And it's an extraordinary thing, and everybody should do it at least once. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, so with this um, background of design, I came to Berkeley, and I took a number of courses. Um, and I probably didn't know it then, but now looking back, I can see that thread of design through all of these courses and how it's shaped um, my future path and the careers I'm looking into. I start, started off with the beauty and joy of computing, which is CS10. Um, uh, one of the very first applications I made was um, an app to teach people American Sign Language. And it's an incredible thing being able to use um, Snap, which is Berkeley's like drag and drop programming interface to create something that's usable and actually a, a proper application. 
And from CS10, I graduated on to actual programming courses with syntax and code. And I did artificial intelligence, which is CS188. I made Pac-Man games at one itself. But the interesting thing about artificial intelligence is um, being able to see how computers should think the way humans do. And it's an interesting flip side where you need to think about the world and design these heuristics, how to make decisions um, in a very controlled environment. Um, the next is user interface design, which Stephen also did, which is CS160, which is, um, I did it um, as designing Android applications, um, which is a very interesting problem given the constraints of time and space and being able to design for um, that sort of platform. And this semester, I'm doing industrial design and human factors, which is all about design and designing for humans, how, um, how to design things that most humans fit into, how they uh, interact with these devices. And one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken at Berkeley is critical design, which is CS294. And um, that is creating things that provoke thought and um, reimagining um, environments and spaces and just designing things to make people think. So with all of the formal things, I also did design after school. I did innovative design, where I did a lot of graphic design, web design, um, Berkeley Innovation, where I did user interface, user experience, Berkeley Byte, talking to people about design um, in the design world, how it shaped their perspectives. I did decals on Photoshop and Illustrator, and that also um, helped me express myself creatively. Um, so, diving into the heart of this talk, how design changed engineering. Um, one of, in one of my industrial design classes, we went to um, the Gershoni Creative Agency, and in Gil Gershoni's talk, he made this very poignant quote that stuck with me where he said, your product means nothing if a user doesn't have a meaningful experience with it. And it's an extraordinary thing to be able to build this immense technology and have it have so many wonderful functions, but it means absolutely nothing if someone tries to use it and they can't. It needs to be able to create a connection with a user. And I think that's what design is, and that's what it taught me. Um, that when you engineer, you need to engineer with vision. You need to engineer with a comment, with a goal in mind and how it will benefit your users. So that's where Imagineering comes in. Um, Imagineering is a made up word, it's a portmanteau. It's engineering with imagination, but it's an interesting way of approaching engineering um, to have this positive outlook on making things. So, um, when I engineer things, I try to keep five things in mind. Make things as beautiful as they are functional, that um, it's in, um, things need to be strong and robust, but also should have um, a seamless interface. Uh, going back to the Gershoni talk, where he said, um, a device should be almost invisible, um, interface through which people should reach through to get what they want. And that ties into the second commandment, which is make things that are seamlessly accessible. Um, I read a, an article a couple of days ago about um, designing websites to be accessible. And it's interesting because you would think that interfaces like a website are just text and photographs on a screen, but, um, and that most people should be able to use them. But it's interesting when you see how um, colorblind people see a website how it's difficult to tell when a button is clicked, um, the contrast between different things. And being able to keep all of these things in mind and design a website is to make everybody able to use it seamlessly is a difficult task and it's something everybody should keep in mind. Um, thirdly, make things that you love to make. I strongly believe this. I think whenever you do a job, it, you need to be able to believe in the product. You need to be able to have this mission and um, make things that you love. <laughs> and the fourth thing is um, make things that make the world a little bit better. I guess when you engineer things, you should be able to 
put it out there and have someone get a little bit of joy or comfort or escape from reality that they could possibly get. And I think that's a wonderful goal to have when you're making something. And fifthly, just keep making things. Um, it's a wonderful thing to make. Just make, create, break, build. It's all part of the learning process and it, you have the impact to make someone's life a little bit better. So I think you should always make things. Um, since I'm running short of time, I will just quickly run through what things I've made in my college career. Um, the center beat by beat was my CS16C final project where we made um, an application to um, help people with no um, musical knowledge be able to compose things and um, save their um, melodies as notations that they could understand. Um, the one there on the far right is Floobs, which is my toy design for industrial design, which is a set of pipes which are um, a sort of puzzle to exercise cognitive and analytical skills, um, which is also meant to teach children about the drought and how engineering water flow uh, properly will help save water. Um, the bottom right one is um, a robot that uh, detects motion and sound, which is meant to be a precursor to a device that could possibly be um, used in war zones or uh, natural disaster zones to seek people out from the rubble. Um, this one right here is in Cal Colors is a gift box that travels around um, and it pings um, its location to Twitter. Um, her name is Dora. Um, this one on the top is actually one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. It's called Chatty Coaster. It's a coaster that look, um, waits for awkward silences at the table and suggests conversations of topic. Um, it's meant to provoke thought and just make meaningful experiences for people. And my final one that um, I need to run to actually after this talk to work on is Flux, which is um, it's a bracelet for children in hospitals um, to play with. It basically works like um, they have to do certain things off and the nurse checks it off and they gain power and they can use that to play with other kids in the hospital. And it's just that sort of interaction that got me interested in design. Um, I think moving forward, um, it's always good to have, um, design is an iterative process. You always need things to inspire you. Um, one of my favorite designs in the world, um, this is an awful yellow, but. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite designs in the world is Central Park. Um, it's meant to be the lungs of um, New York in um, the city of skyscrapers. But ironically, it's one of the most human manufactured things um, in the world. Every bit is designed by Frederick Olmsted, um, who actually did a lot of the Cal Campus and Golden Gate Park. Um, but it's an extraordinary thing being in Central Park because you almost forget you're in one of the most polluted and crowded cities in the world. Um, that right there is um, the drinkable book, which is meant each book filters water and um, can provide at least a clean, a clean 100 litres for four years uh, for one person, which is an extraordinary thing, um, considering that three million people die from um, untreated water every year. Um, the bottom one there, Socket, is a very popular design where um, they take the game of football and make it fun and uh, generate electricity from it. Google's contact lens right there, that's meant to detect glucose levels from tears. Um, and then that there is the smart trip, which um, links in with a smart gym, which is meant to make the process of working out very interactive with LED persistence of vision and just makes working out fun and informative. So, to tie it all together, I think after all of this, um, after this entire design journey, I think design to me is now all encompassing. It means taking knowledge from all of my different courses, different fields of uh, learning. It's about provoking thought and action, being able uh, to evoke certain responses from users. It's being clever about building, about thinking about a vision and going through with it. It's about creating an experience and 
um, making it a memorable interaction for the user. And then design is design is design. It's just really what it is. It's a bit of a mystery, it's a bit of everything, but it's a beautiful thing. So create an incredible world and be an Imagineer and go ahead and design. Um, so CS294, uh, so it's a graduate course that is cross-linked with New Media 203. Um, what it is, is it's a multidisciplinary course. We have people from architecture, computer science, um, rhetoric, and they put us into uh, groups of five and we make three projects throughout a semester. And it's all about, um, we need to use technology in a very significant way, but it, they usually give us an open-ended prompt and we're meant to rethink that space. So um, for Chatty Coaster, it was uh, to rethink a kitchen object, and that's what we came up with. I was just gonna ask if you market, marketed that to Linda as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, it might, we're actually taking it to Maker Fair, which is in a couple of days. Um, so fingers crossed. Good luck. <laughs> It's actually quite interesting because when we started with Chatty Coaster, we had very mundane questions like, um, what do you think about the weather today? But then when we user tested it and we found that people would burst out laughing and it was just this very absurd situation of having this coaster tell you what to do, um, we thought about turning that and making it provocative. So we started asking uh, questions like, um, um, what do you think about paying your taxes and is it really a necessity? And really one of the questions was um, if a coaster was required to tell you what to talk about, isn't that uh, symptomatic of a dying society? <laughs> so it's sort of, we started introducing these conversations to a kitchen space and instead of small talk, we had people actually create this world of conversation, which was interesting. Next. 